because it reflects what the library has traditionally been, but it also uh, brings a, a spotlight to where we are going with learning and, and our community contacts. And one of the things I want to emphasize about this document is that it is not a uh, one of those documents that you put on the shelf and you say goodbye to. I consider it more of an operating document and a working document that, that lives in the organization. Uh, we have one big audacious goal that is worth mentioning in that we are working towards 70% of uh, folks in Davidson County having library cards, and we're currently at about 47% on that. So we, we consider that a significant and worthy goal. I'm happy to report that uh, your support of opening the main library uh, on Mondays is, is showing dividends. Uh, for the year, the main library is up 16% uh, overall on, on visits to the building. And what we're actually seeing is since the library began opening on Mondays, um, that, that is more like 20%. We did not begin the, the fiscal year opening on Mondays. We waited until October. So uh, we appreciate your investment in that, and, and we do think that that is significant. Um, buildings underway. Um, I think we're being very assertive in the number of building projects and some exciting projects that are about to happen. The southeast branch um, in, in the old mall is uh, moving along well. Bellevue is also moving along. It's a 25,000 square foot standalone branch that will be behind the middle school. Um, both of those will open later this year. Southeast should open uh, at the end of uh, August, Bellevue early in, early in December. The archives move. Uh, we are underway with the renovation on the third floor of the main library. Um, we expect this to be complete by the end of the summer, but we do still expect the archives to be at the main library uh, by the end of May. Our branch renovations and facelifts, uh, we've completed Edge Hill, Old Hickory, and Richland Park, and we have a num number of others uh, that are in process or about to begin, including North Branch, Luby, Inglewood, Thompson Lane, Hadley Park, and Pruitt. Uh, Pruitt will, be, uh, will begin shortly. We will also be in the study mode on uh, two branches that we would think will be major, uh, major uh, projects projects, and that is Bordeaux and Edmondson Pike. The studio um, that we've been working on uh, through uh, the opportunity to have a federal grant from the MacArthur Foundation and IMLS, uh, we're working on the learning labs uh, within our buildings. We have a number of those underway. Uh, Green Hills uh, will actually be having its grand opening next Monday, and we were able to open Green Hills early uh, due to a uh, of funding uh, support from the uh, Friends of the Green Hills Library and also the Nashville Public Library Foundation. But we really see the learning labs as a direction that we will be going in the future in our buildings to uh, really engage uh, students, uh, teens, and eventually adults in one-on-one -on -one learning and opportunities. Limitless Libraries uh, continues to be a success. We're placing the finishing touches on an independent performance report. We believe that Limitless Libraries is a win-win partnership because it achieves both of its primary goals, expanding access to learning resources for school students, and increasing our National Public Library collections access for students and youth. And we are happy uh, that we are going to actually be hosting a national convention uh, sponsored by the School Library Journal later in April. Uh, there will be about 100 selected librarians from across the country there. While it is an overall look at how we provide children's services, they will also be uh, taking a very interested look in what we are doing with Limitless Libraries. We've completed a study of um, our current online catalog and uh, We've done that in uh, conjunction with the Metro Schools. What we uh, believe is important and perhaps will be efficient is that we join into one online system, one catalog system that will manage both the collections and the user database. And uh, again, we think that this has uh, some great efficiencies involved with it. We've done our middle library, uh, our middle school library renovations, DuPont, Hadley, and Apollo. The planning is nearly complete on those, and uh, when the schools close their doors this spring, those renovations will begin. 
I'm uh, happy to uh, point out again that Liz Atak, who's in charge of our Bringing Books to Life program, was selected the Toyota Family Teacher of the Year. And she, again, she supervises our Bringing Books to Life program. This is significant uh, not only to the Nashville Public Library, but librarians everywhere, because uh, it's rare that librarians are, are really acknowledged as the educators and people in the learning system that they are. Our total program, supervised by Monica McLaurin, was honored for efforts to reduce both school and community bullying. The recognition took place uh, this last February at the National Conference on Bullying, and the conference was hosted by the uh, School Safety Advocacy Council. And I also wanted to point out that our ADA program was recognized this last year by the Mayor's Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and that was primarily for, for recognition that we are making a concerted effort that all of our programs are accessible for folks that show up with disabilities. We've been reworking our website. Uh, if you've gone on our website recently, you'll see that it has more of an Amazon feel to it, or I like to say better than Amazon because it's actually easier to navigate if you've been on Amazon lately. Can drones deliver your books? Not yet, but <laughs> we're working on that. Um, we have the free online resources in addition to Zinnia. We have Freegal and Hoopla that will download video and music uh, to our card holders. Our adult literacy program continues to move forward. Um, in addition to the summit, which was held last fall, uh, we're working more and more with the Nashville Adult Literacy Council and to move those programs or their programs into our branches. We're expanding our ebook collection. Uh, our Lucky Day collection is something that's new but worth noting due to the fact that instead of waiting for a couple of months on bestsellers now, we've created a program where if you just come in and you see a bestseller in this particular collection, you can take it the day that you find it. And that's why well, it's day. called a Lucky Day. Yeah, exactly. Um, a few of the programs the foundation supports, bringing books to life in total, I've already alluded to. Uh, the Courtyard Concert Series continues with great area musicians of, of all types. The salon at 615 is, is worth noting today, uh, just for the fact that it really exemplifies the, uh, the wonderful partnership we have with Parnassus Books and Humanities Tennessee. Uh, the lineup of people that have been coming to um, the, the salon this year has been phenomenal. Anna Lamont, Ann Patchett, uh, Pat Conroy, and Amy Tan, to name a few. The Neelys will be there uh, with their food advice in a couple of weeks as well. So this is a great program and a great example of a wonderful collaboration. This was also a significant year because the Southern Festival of Books returned to Nashville Public Library. And uh, we had a number of their programs in our building, and we expect to continue that particular uh, particular uh, collaboration. The Nashville Room and Civil Rights Room, uh, Encyclopedia Nashville, the project that's going on within Metro, we are a key player in that program. Uh, this last Sunday on the front page of the Tennessean, there was a great article about StoryCorps and uh, what an Andrea Blackman and her staff are doing with that particular program. We are pleased and uh, honored to be part of the Affordable Care Act uh, sign-up. We hosted uh, those sign-ups in our buildings, and we were pleased to do that. Tricia Bengal and Marion Christman were key players at our end to make that happen. And in fact, last night, Tr Tricia was even at Green Hills and kept Green Hills open well after uh, the hours that it was supposed to be open to make sure people could get into the system. Um, before I move into our specific budget requests, I, you know, I just like to say that we do have a great staff at the library um, and I think it's worth noting because as we come into uh, sessions like this we tend to hit the highlights of all the wonderful things that we're doing and we have great staff doing those but we also have great staff doing those more traditional library services the day in and day out that really makes our library a special place. Um, 
the enhancements that were requested for this year, uh, we believe that we're facing an exceptional set of opportunities this year with a number of studies that have come to fruition, um, and uh, we have some opportunities in front of us. Uh, we've requested funding for additional staff at Southeast and Bellevue, uh, three staff uh, to begin the system-wide approach to the studio, excuse me, the studios, funding for technology staff to implement the joint ILS with the uh, Metro schools, 4% funding for library materials increased, Friday service hours for the regional branch libraries, contracted library grounds maintenance, continued bond funding to support the library renovations, main library staffing enhancement of three full-time equivalents in the teen special collections and AV service area, and a funding enhancement to support the inaugural year of the uh, pathway for new, new Americans in the immigration corners. And that is all I've got. Very good. Uh, well, I started my day with the libraries. I was at Maplewood High School with uh, Karen Joy Fowler, the mm -hmm. author of We're All Completely Beside Ourselves, mm -hmm. which is the um, Nashville Reeves book. Right. So she was speaking out there, which was a good, a good thing. Mm -hmm. Could you um, explain to the viewing audience what learning labs are and sure. what their role is? Learning Labs is taking our learning uh, role a step further, and what it's really about is creating special places in our buildings where there's one-on-one -on -one learning uh, development for teens and tweens primarily. And uh, the pilot that we ran is really a great way to explain what they are. Um, the pilot that the grant uh, provided us the opportunity to complete included Southern Word and Vanderbilt. And we had teens that were in our space writing poems, composing music, and creating videos. And at the same time, we were doing uh, some work on computer software that was really about civic planning that Vanderbilt was helping to the students to work through. And it's all about one-on-one -on -one directed learning where students can get their hands on in a different environment than they have during the school day. And a key component of the studio slash learning lab is that it is mentor driven. It's not a situation where the teens come in and you throw them in a space and you point them towards equipment and say good luck. It's a situation where you want to have mentors who have expertise in areas, whether it be recording music or, or working on software or, or writing. And those folks are actually able to help these, these folks create a, a special <laughs> learning environment. Okay, and then the, the Green Hills is mm -hmm. opening Monday? The Green Hills is actually opening Monday. We were able to uh, move it forward due to the uh, the outside funding sources of, of the Friends and the Foundation. And it will, it will be a great example as far as the physical space of what's <laughs> happening. Uh, what folks are going to find there are additional computers, some special equipment, including a 3D printer, uh, where you can go, you know, teens will be able to go in on software, uh, create something and actually see it printed on site. Um, you know, I think about these as, as being very special places because the learning isn't just about what's thrown at you during the school day, but you can actually create something you're interested in. Um, so. Okay, and these will be in all the regionals, or how, what will be the... The way we're rolling it out right now is that we have the Green Hill space. Uh, the studio at Maine will be at the Maine Library when that renovation is completed. And Bellevue and Southeast will open um, with those spaces intact. And what we will do is, as we go through the renovations, we will create additional spaces. Uh, and I, you know, another component of this will be that we will create a mobile learning lab. And the mobile learning lab will be able to go to places where the teens are already at if they're not able to get into, into the libraries. And could you explain what the difference is between the community library versus a regional library? Uh, the regional library is, is a large uh, service unit. I, service unit makes it sound a little sterile, but it's usually a, a larger building, 20 to 25,000 square feet, has more staff, more, more resources, more materials in it. And in those particular locations, the branch manager is actually supervising different regions of our library system. And uh, they're 
just a, many more resources there, and we do try and have those spread out through the, the county strategically so that they're an additional resource. The community libraries are smaller, have fewer materials, and generally have less programming. Okay. Um, there's a request in the budget for, um, I guess, supplies for the My City Academy um, New Americans Corner. Right. Could you describe what that involves? That is, yeah, the New Americans Corner is a way that we will provide uh, resources and direction and information for immigrants with, within Davidson County. And we feel like uh, the libraries are a perfect place for this particular program. Uh, the, the money is startup money to actually print material, um, create some uh, pop-ups so that there will actually be a physical presence to those spots. But the whole idea is that we want the immigrants and, and New Americans and New Davidson County residents who come from other places to feel like they can come in the library, we can help direct them towards citizenship or find information that will enhance their daily life. And the budget request is supplies? Is it it's primarily supplies and startup. Okay. And in this year's budget, we're making a transfer of um, and so I want to thank you for and the board for your willingness to do this. But the after-school programming NASA began in the, in the mayor's office during my first term, and it's at a point where it needs to find a permanent home. And how does that fit into your mission? Well, we believe the uh, Nashville After Zone Alliance is consistent with what we're doing with limitless libraries and our enhanced programming, such as bringing books to life and uh, some of the other literacy efforts. And we see an opportunity here to work with those students and really help develop that learning piece of the after school program. Uh, we think it's a, a very good process for us to be involved with. Um, we spent this fall working with the Advisory Council for NASA and uh, really studying the program. Um, Keith Simmons from our board was involved in that process as well, along with our foundation. And uh, we just see it as a real opportunity to maybe uh, take NASA where it's been and maybe insert some uh, additional literacy opportunities as we go forward. So I think your budget will reflect a, a bump up, and that's really money coming from here, the mayor's office going okay. there, right? Great. Right. Um, what about percentage-wise, where do you think you are with um, the circulation of books versus e-books? I can give you that. <laughs> or close to it. Um, well, our total circulation of, uh, of adult uh, and juvenile books last year was about 2.5 million. And our total AV, and that would include everything from electronic to DVD, to, was about 1.9 million. <laughs> So we're still running ahead with the books. You know, one of our real challenges in our in our collections is that 